Hi everybody, this is Susie. This is the first time that I'm going to be doing a video about um, my art journals. Usually I've uh, posted things about my weight loss surgery or things concerning my dogs or other silly things and I've also shown um, some of my other craft things like mini books and flowers etc etc. But today I'm going to show an art journal. Um, I've been doing art journaling and been dabbling with it for about a year now um, and I'm finding that it is something that really helps me out a lot and this particular journal is very special to me because it has a lot of history and I'd like to tell you about it. First of all I need to um, tell you why it's covered up. It's covered up because there is a reason that I, I want to explain what the first page or, or the, the main page is. Is that our page? Anyway, so I will uncover it. This is the center of my book. On January 17th, as you can see, I had surgery done on my right wrist. Right now I just have a brace on, but for the past four months I've been in a full arm cast I am unable to write with my right hand. I've had to learn how to do everything left-handed, which is very difficult for me. But I learned. And um, this journal, everything, all of the art that has been done in here has been done with my left hand. So here we go. This day after I had my surgery that night, I was in a lot of pain. The pain medication wasn't doing anything. And I decided to get up and paint because painting, slapping paint on paper is something that has always helped me feel better. If nothing else, it doesn't take the pain away, but it takes my mind away from the pain. So I had these great big large pieces of paper. I took one out and I started slapping paint on it and spreading it around with a credit card. And when I was done with that, and it was dry, I decided, well, I'm going to do something else here. I had a little, little fun poem going on in my head, and uh, I decided to do some controlled journaling, something that I had been practicing before. So you did the, I did the squiggly lines, and I took a um, Faber-Castell pit pen with a brush tip, and this was the very first time that I wrote with my left hand. And it says, pain, pain, go away. Don't come again another day. Go away and stay away. And this is the first day, and I think I did a pretty good job. It's a little strange here, here and there, but actually I, I kind of like it. Well, after I was done with that, I thought, you know, I, I don't know what to do with this. And uh, I, then I decided, you know, I've got a lot of these papers, and some are blank, and some are already painted, um, and I folded this in half, and I thought, I'm going to make a journal. I was also um, just starting, I was interested in, in book binding. So I took all of the papers that I had, and they were, there were eight of them. I folded them in half. I took out my little book binding kit with my awl and my my needles and my waxed thread and I looked first on YouTube to find a video that would show me how to do the simple pamphlet stitch which uh, I found out later that it's really not gonna hold up in a big journal like this but anyway I punched my holes and I sewed this book together you can see it's sewn together for the most part so we're gonna start from the beginning it is appropriately called my left hand. And as you can see, um, I, I have a, an acrylic paint, painted background and um, a reinforced edge with masking tape. Um, ca ransom type letters for the title and handprints. Of course, with my left hand. So here we go, my left hand. This first page was already painted um, with this gold metallic paint. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, when I finish it, I'm going to write 
the history of this book. I'm going to um, explain what each page means, what you're, you know, what I'm going to do for all of you today, and um, so it, so I can remember it. And if I if it doesn't fit on this page, it'll it'll go on the back. Um, I do need to explain what a lot of the quotes and things in here are about. I've had a very tough year this year. Um, as some of you know, uh, oh boy, it's not just been this year. I think it's been, well, it's been this year and the past. I had weight loss surgery done and it triggered um, some mental health issues that I have. And one year afterwards, I did have an emotional breakdown and was hospitalized. After that hospitalization, I was uh, in a group therapy program, wonderful program. And a lot of this, um, the sayings and things in here, are about growth and positivity, inspiration that I got there. So, let me begin with this first page. I, I didn't do these in chronological error, um, order, I just did them however I felt like doing them. Um, one of the things that we learned in um, in one of the therapy sessions was about tapping. Now, tapping, I don't know if anything, any of you know anything about tapping. You're tapping on certain parts of your body and you're repeating a positive affirmation. And this is what the affirmation says. Um, I've substituted the word for this pain um, or this emotional thing for the word feeling. So it says, even though I have these feelings, I deeply and completely accept myself. And while you are tapping, you are repeating this affirmation over and over again. It's wonderful. It's, uh, if you're interested in looking at this or, or seeing more about getting more information, you can go to tapping.com. So anyway, I did the control journaling on a watercolor pencil background and I thought, well, what am I going to do? Of course, I trace my left hand because there's also points on your hand that you can squeeze here, pinch there. And they all um, supposedly, well, they all ha are connected to different parts of your body. And they also are, are connected to different feelings or um, emotional things that you are having and you do the same thing. You are, what, well, what I did here is I put hearts on all of the places that I need to do my tapping on so that I can help myself with any of the emotional turmoil or pain that I might be having. Um, around my hand, I did Zentangle. Um, I'm pretty proud of it because it doesn't look too bad for being done with my left hand. So we'll go on. This next page was also done um, with a credit card painting. And um, I just used blue and green and white. And as I was looking at it, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And suddenly I kind of saw, you can't see it now, but in the, in the white I saw the figures or shapes of birds. And I thought, okay, I'm going to find... Um, a quote about birds because it looked like birds and looked like the ocean and you know, the white caps from the waves and I um, also was taking a online class by Carolyn Doobie um, about use your words using stencils so I did use stencils here in the word fly so this uh, quote says don't believe what your eyes are telling you all they see is limitation Find out what you really know, and you will see the way to fly. And um, I think that I, my first attempt I didn't like, so I covered it up with gold paint, and then I just kind of finger painted with gold around and made an edge, uh, a border. And we'll continue. Ah, famous jelly, jelly print. I kept reading about people talking about jelly plate, and I didn't know what it was. And, I, and I'm seeing jelly plate, jelly plate, jelly plate. Finally, I Googled it, and I fell in love. I wanted one. 
um, this was before Christmas, so my son asked me, what do you want for Christmas, Mom? I said, a jelly plate. I want a jelly plate. And I didn't get it until February. Um, but I fell in love. I was jelly plate painting. I've got a whole tub full of prints. I went and bought um, cheap deli paper. Well, on this page here, I also was using this book to um, practice some new techniques, but this page here, originally, if you can see on the bottom here, has brown paint. I had found out that you could do a crackle effect using Elmer's glue and acrylic paint. So that's what was on here first was that and it was boring and I thought what am I going to do with this so I had all of these uh, neat jelly plate printed roses so I thought well I'm going to find a quote about roses and I'm going to do it on here but I need to cover it up so that you can see the roses so I collaged pieces of tissue paper then I collaged on the roses and I found this quote you can complain because roses have thorns, or rejoice that thorns have roses. And this is by Ziggy, or actually the, the writer or draw, illustrator of Ziggy. So we'll go on. Um, I'm on Instagram a lot, and I, have, I share my art, and I share how I'm feeling. And uh, one day I was feeling very um, tired and depressed, and, and I was just very negative, and I took a self-picture, a self-portrait, and I posted it, and I said, you know, I just can't take this. I've had enough. And uh, one of my followers is Dale Ann Potter, who is a positivity coach, and she gave me a challenge. She commented, I'm going to give you a challenge. I want you to take 15 minutes with some magazines and cut out pictures of things that make you smile. Well, of course, I can't cut because I can't uh, use my right hand, or couldn't, especially then. I um, decided just to tear out the pictures. So I did that. She said, okay, when you've torn out a bunch of pic uh, pictures in that 15 minutes, put them aside. And then an another time, take those pictures and collage them in your art journal. Just glue them on there willy-nilly. So I did that. and. and I tried collaging before and it was really hard for me because I wanted to do everything um, in certain ways and I just let myself glue them down wherever. The next part of the challenge was to journal about these things and say what it was that made me or what each of these things made me smile and you really can't. So what I did is I, I used my left hand, I'm getting very good at writing with it. It's um, not easy, but I can do it, and it's, it's fairly legible. But I took Jelly Roll gel pens, and I wrote on each of these pictures what it was that made me smile. Well, I started out with these pens up here, and I wrote uh, anything that makes a mark, that writes and draws, and it felt really stilted what I was writing, so I ended up just um, kind of doing like stream of consciousness and it was very cathartic. It took much longer than 15 minutes, but I couldn't stop until I was finished. And um, I'd like to read some of these. Uh, I found this picture here of a van and a fl um, flower, and it reminded me of the Partridge family, and, uh, or Scooby-Doo, and it gave me good memories of my childhood. I had the word reads. I love to read. I loved to read, now I listen to books. I have a picture of a person in a hammock and I wrote about me being getting into a hammock for the first time on my birthday, 49th birthday, at my brother's house and uh, I got in the hammock and proceeded to just fall out and I hurt my elbow. It was, it was a, you know, it hurt but it was funny. So there were, there were silly things like that but then there are also pictures like here on the bottom of the lighthouse and it says always remember that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it will keep me safe and it will always take me home so you can see all of the different things that I did there collage watercolor acrylic paint 
There's a work in progress, progress page. First, I think that I had uh, just covered the page with masking tape, and then I, um, it looks like I've collaged some other kinds of paper on there, uh, jelly print paper, and then there's some acrylic painting. I don't know what I'm going to do here. We'll, f we'll see. I still have a, a while that I'm going to be using my right or left hand because I have to have another surgery. So this is going to take a, a long time to um, get finished. Another work in pro progress. This page was done entirely in, um, on my jelly plate. I just did it you know, by tipping my book over and printing on there. And here is one of the things that you can't tell very well is that it's masked. I've got it taped together. This is, I think, one of the first pages that um, started getting torn and falling out. So I took big masking tape and put it down the center and glued the paper together, pages together. I just finished this page today. Um, it was done, as you can see, um, I think I have some bits of acrylic paint in there. I've got masking tape. I've got um, book pages collaged on there. I have uh, color spray or color wash sprays on there. I have ink. And I was watching a video by Shannon Green talking about how you can make just plain computer paper. Um, you can have any image or whatever and brush it with oil and it turns it kind of clear and you can glue it on to your page and it just becomes part of the page so that's how I got my quote never ever give up I'm not going to give up I'm going to try really hard not to okay, we'll go on yeah, you've seen this page already this next page here I had just done some acrylic painting um, had painted over it and one night my son had come over, my oldest son, and uh, he was telling me that he had uh, decided that he was going to move out of the country and he um, was going to move to Venezuela. Um, and I was telling him about my journal and showed it to him and he took a pen and he wrote a quote here and he wrote it in Spanish, he wrote it upside down and it says, uh, Una vez que has aprendido a amar, has aprendido a, a vivir. Uh, translated into English, it means once you've learned how to love, you've learned how to live. Well, I didn't want to cover up what he had written, and I think, you know, I left it open. And I think maybe this page was blank when he did that. So I did um, the acrylic paint, and I started painting with a brush. Didn't like it, excuse me, my dogs hopefully are not going to start barking. And I didn't like what was happening, so I just took my fingers and started painting with my fingers. I love how it looks now. Again, I don't know what I'm going to do uh, doing with it. Here's one page that is kind of negative and not really at the same time. I think that the background is uh, either watercolor, pencil, or gymnastics. I'm not sure. And then I went over it with a wonderful... Patches, excuse me, stop. I went over with this wonderful clear glitter paint that you can find in Michael's. It's uh, something in the children's section. I really need to get it. Um, I painted this at um, the afternoon uh, group therapy program that I was in. Well, I collaged on top of that. I had run out of large pieces of paper to paint on, and again... Shannon Green uh, talks about using found papers and painting on anything that you have around. So, since I needed to paint, I had newspaper ads. So this is a newspaper ad that I probably just painted on several times to make it somewhat strong. And then I painted the circles in there. And it reminded me of, of, of space. And I decided that I was going to do a ransom note quote on there. And it's not even a quote, it's just a saying. Sometimes I want to escape. And it's true, sometimes I want to escape um, the bad feelings that I have, sometimes the depression. Um, 
I, I want to escape that and I want to, you know, stay in, in a positive frame of mind. The next page. This has really got a neat story here. This is uh, Become One with the Apple. And there is a gel transfer. Not a very good gel transfer, but I'll explain what happened there. Uh, the page is done with uh, acrylic pa paints, just layers. And I was um, in an aftercare program. I still am in this program. And sometimes I just I get very, very... Um, frantic or, fr you know, I just, I think I have to do everything at once. Shh. And I was there and, and, and I'm, I'm a crier. Shh. I'm a crier. And I'm always crying. <laughs> and Bonnie, the therapist, told me she, I was eating an apple and I was thinking, I just don't know how I'm going to get everything done. I don't know how I'm going to get everything done. And she said, Susie, can you become one with the apple? Become one with the apple. This wasn't the first time um, she had told me to do something like this uh, a while back she told me to be go home and be broccoli and uh, somebody else showed the art journal that I did with that page but anyway this was become one with the apple I um, wrote the words become one with the apple on ledger paper and of course I drew an apple here and wrote the word and here is my inkjet, uh, inkjet gel transfer I was told you can't do gel transfer with inkjet Print, uh, printed paper. Well, here it is. Not very, uh, not a very good one, but it's it's there. Dogs, be quiet. Excuse me. Here's another page, jelly printed. Well, it's je not jelly printed, but jelly printed um, papers that I cut in strips and collaged on there. And the hand in the middle was one of my very first prints that I had made when I got my uh, jelly plate. And it was really a neat thing. It looked kind of. Uh, ethereal and, and spooky and I was going to just tear out around the hand but I ended up fussy tearing if there's such a thing I tore around my hand and I glued it in there well I can write with my left hand but since I was a kid I've always played around and I can write backwards I'm more comfortable writing backwards well I wrote backwards in here and I will um, tell you what it says, but really to read it, if you don't know what it says, you need to have a, a mirror. But it says in there, I want to have my right hand back. And, and, and sometimes I really do get um, frustrated because I want to have my right hand back. Right now I have it because I have a brace instead of a cast, but I still can't do a lot of things because of, it hurts. Well, this next page here. Looks like it was one that was already uh, painted when I made the book and I think that I sprayed some color wash on there and there are drips and drops of uh, other pages, paint from other pages. And I had seen a quote on um, one of Donna Downing's vi videos and I liked it so I wrote it down but I tweaked it a little bit because I felt like the, the order was different so I used a whiteout pen. If you don't know about using whiteout pens, um, correction pens, to write with on journal pages, they're really nice. They write on smooth surfaces. So I used it and it says, be still, stop thinking, feel, visualize, take action, and repeat. I like how it changed color here because the liquid or the water in the pen picked up the ink and changed colors so I've got that neat kind of a feeling there. I'm not sure what is under this um, paper. This is uh, just crumpled up computer paper. I just crumpled it up, crumpled it up, crumpled it up and then I smoothed it out and then I covered the page, whatever was on there, I don't remember, um, with a homemade collage paste that I have um, that I found a recipe for on YouTube. And uh, again, it was just there. I, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Um, last week, I was in Hobby Lobby and just kind of putzing around, and I found um, some Derwent art bars. And there were two sets of 12. One of them was priced at uh, $24.99, and the other was priced at $14.99. And I thought, wow, this is strange. 
know, I, but I couldn't pass it up because Derwent is a really good brand and and I love their product, so I, I had a coupon and I, I got it for 40% off. So I immediately came home and I uh, used my art bars to color a blue border around hair and then I kind of scribbled with white and I scribbled with yellow and I took a brush with water and this is what I got. I don't know what I'm going to do there, but I love how it looks right now. This page here, um, I had one day I woke up and um, I stepped on the scale and I didn't like what it read. I didn't like the number that was there. And uh, I took my journal with me. This is when I was in the uh, group therapy thing that I went to every day. And I didn't like what, well, anyway, no, I didn't like what I saw. So I did this big journal. And I decided what I was going to do was I was going to write about it here. And I had taken, before I painted it with uh, acrylic paints, I think, I had taken masking tape and I had um, torn that off. And I wrote all the negative things that I could think of about me in these strips where the masking tape was. And I wrote it in my um, watercolor pencil. And then I took a, a wet brush and I erased it. And I think I got that that uh, technique from, um, I can't think of, uh, Quinn somebody, a book called Raw Journaling, another excellent book. And then I wrote, supposedly it was more positive things with this pen, but it, here it said, I do not want to see blankety blank pounds, I'm not going to say. I don't want to see this. It's not okay. I'm going to better my life. But I didn't like it. I didn't like that this thing that started out negatively was in my journal. So the other day, I jostled over it. And I jostled with a palette knife. I've never done that before, and it left a lot of neat texture. So I was really pleased. I don't know what I'm going to do with it now. Next page is one of my favorites. Again, this was inspired by a Donna Downey video where she had splattered paint, twinkling H2Os all over the pages in her journal. And I was like, oh, I got to do it. That's something I can do. It won't be hard. I will do this. And I splattered and I splashed and I threw my paint all over. And I thought of a quote by Danny Kay that I had put in another art journal that was perfect for this. And it says, life is like a great big ca canvas and you should throw all of the paint you can on it. Well, I stamped that. And uh, you can, I made one mistake. And if you can find the mistake, comment, put it in the comments. Usually the gremlin inside me, my inner critic, would have jumped up and down and screamed and made a fit because I made a mistake and would have, I would have tried to fix it. And I didn't. I didn't. I pushed that gremlin away and I left the mistake there. And I think it's okay. So I think we're getting to the, oh, we're getting to the last page. Another page that was inspired by a Donna Downey video. It does not look anything like hers. I started out um, doing her technique, but it was it was a mess. I I've learned a lot of different things about uh, the things that happen with different art materials. I started out using a stencil and gel sticks and kept coloring in all of 